morning, men. Morning. 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 Welcome out to this demonstration today on the breech pen. My name is Max Joseph. Um, I know most of you, but I have a spiel planned out, so I'm going to start with a very brief background of myself. I'm going to start with a brief background on your options when you're breaching, and then I'm going to focus the rest of the morning on the actual breech pen, uh, the spe uh, specifications of it, and the practical application. This last year, I saw a young 27-year-old PJ uh, named Brian Cole demonstrated uh, something that is extremely unique, okay? And this thing is gonna freaking save lives, there's no doubt in my mind. And we're talking about the breech pen here, which I'll get more into depth here in a minute. But um, when you see that thing, I think it'll definitely make an impression on you. You're talking about breaching, we have basically, to penetrate inside of a target, we have four options, okay? First off is mechanical. You guys do this every week when you go out and do your warrant service. You got your rams, you got your halleys, you got your freaking rake and brakes, uh, your freaking bolt cutters. All right, so mechanical breaching is pretty common sense. A little bit of muscle behind it, and you get inside that target. Your second option could be ballistic. Okay, shotgun breaching <clears throat> was definitely heavily used in, during the late 70s, 80s. It kind of fell out of vogue in the 90s when explosive breaching started catching on a little bit more, but it's definitely very, very popular now. And the reason that I think uh, breach or shotgun breaching came back into the forefront is because so many veterans came back from Iraq and Afghanistan who have hundreds of freaking operational breaches with their shotguns over there. Your third option is thermal, okay? With your thermal breaching, up until this point now, had consisted of oxygen acetylene torches for by cutting through cell bars and things like that, or you had your exothermic torches like Broco, Hunter Olson. They use oxygen and freaking ferret rods and uh, they burn through very, very high temperatures. The limitations of those are you have to have tanks with you, you have hoses, you gotta light these things and, and make sure you know how to light them because they're not always that easy to get going. Um, so up until this point, it's been basically torches. Your fourth option is your explosive breaching, okay? Really came around in the, in the late 80s and whatnot in this country and it's caught on definitely now. Back up now to thermal, okay? With your thermal or the acceleration process, you also have different levels of this, okay? You have <clears throat> combustibles, all right, which is like newspaper and, and kindling and two by fours, all right? It burns, it burns, but you have to have the right combination of heat, oxygen, and fuel to get that stuff burning, okay? So that's combustibles. Second up that food chain now, we have accelerants. You got your gasoline, your lighter fluids, whatnot. It's gonna ignite very, very easy but it basically burns at a, at a steady flame rate, okay? Then you have incendiaries, okay? And that's where this falls under, okay? With your incendiaries, they burn at an extremely high rate of, of uh, doggone uh, heat. And then you have your low explosives, which is like your gun, your smokeless powder, your flash powder you have in your flash bangs, and then you have your high explosives, okay? So combustibles, accelerants, incendiaries, low explosives, and high explosives. The breech pen, is 12 inches overall. It is fairly weatherproof, okay? And you know what? Today is motivated because it being a wet environment out here, we're, we're going to make sure that this thing still works, all right? With your breech pen, you open it up and you have your ignition rod on the inside here, okay? The ignition rod is composed of magnesium and a little bit of thermite igniter compound on the end here, okay? This rod is six inches long. It has a burn time of between 23 and 25 seconds, okay? The ignition rate of this, in other words, when you light it, it kicks off at about 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. But when this rod gets going, it burns at just over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And that is half the temperature of the sun. When I was told that, I thought that was bullshit until I actually looked it up online. The sun, <laughs> the sun supposedly burns at 9,980 degrees Fahrenheit. This burns at just over 5,000, about 5,072 degrees Fahrenheit when it gets going. Okay. In order to get this rod going and to ignite this thing, okay, you can't light this with a with a match or a lighter. You can't even light it with a, a, a high powered butane type lighter. Right? The only thing that'll kick off magnesium is gonna be thermite. Okay. So with that in mind, inside the butt cap here, we have a thermite match. Okay. On your burn rod here. You have a striker compound on both sides, so you can ignite this thing either right or left-handed. It's very important how we hold this rod when we actually ignite it, okay? This thing will it will work when it's wet. This will light when it's wet, okay? The only downside with moisture is if your 
striker pad becomes degraded, okay, because the striker pad, it's just like a match thing, a match striker. All right, if this gets soaking wet, okay, it can, it can fail to ignite, but I've never seen that happen, okay. What we're going to do today is I'm going to do two demo cuts for you guys. I'm going to talk about how we hold this thing, how we get through these targets, and then I've got a half a dozen out here for you guys to try. When you do your cut, okay, you always want to cut from bottom to top, okay. You're going to see some very hot slag come off this thing, and the slag is actually what melts through your, your steel. So if you start on the top and cut, your slag will actually fall down to the lower level and kind of block your cut. I don't have to sever both sides of this link to breach this chain. I just need to I just need to get through one of these sides and then I can just un unhasp it. When you light the rod, it has a red igniter tip right here. When you strike it and you light, you gotta have that tip down and away from yourself, just like this. This match burns furiously hot, but only burns for a second or two. Okay? You touch it right to that igniter tip, it'll get your dog on who you got going. I've I've only done I've, I, have, I have five burns under me. Okay, I've burned through five of these things in practice. I've never had a failure to ignite, but I have seen I have seen guys in the breach symposium fail to light them. So it's always suggested that if you're the breacher on the team or you're carrying one of these, it's ideal to have about three spare matches on your body. Okay, and they sell matches individually. You put them in like a little waterproof looking match container and have them in your kit. It's like having spare primers for your firing device if you're supposed to breach it. Okay, so fire a hole. When you strike it and this match lights, once your rod gets going, remember to drop your match. Okay, it's easy to forget that because you start focusing on your burn now, you're holding this in your hand still, and then your gloves on fire. Okay, so you got your kit. I've drawn a front hole. Ignition. Okay, once the once you get through the target, separate your cut before the fuse pulls off or before the molten steel pulls off and starts to fuse together again. And we'll follow that. When this match is lit, or when, this, when the friggin' breech rod is lit, it's gonna burn out its entirety. The only way to stop that burn process is to shear your rod, okay, which ain't gonna happen. So the thing is, it's not like you can just stick this in the dirt and have it go out when you're done with it. It's gonna keep burning, for sure. All right, so on the, on the cut there, you guys saw the slag fall. This is the first time I've cut in a moist environment. So you can see how the slag was reacting with the water down there. We're getting a little bit of friggin', you know, a little bit of rupture of the slag. When you cut, you got to keep your feet clear of your cut site, all right? Because if that slag falls down your foot, okay, which has happened to me, uh, it can it'll burn through your shoe in a, in a heartbeat. Now, normally, when I've done cuts where it's not wet, you'll end up with a, a pile of glowing slag on the ground there. Like any incendiary or any accelerant, is there a fire hazard with this? Of course there is, just like there is with your flashbang, okay? So the second product that Breach Pen sells with this, hey, and let me do this disclaimer, okay? I'm not a sales rep for Breach Pen, okay? I don't sell these things, and I don't make one cent what other people sell. I just saw a tool that I thought could definitely save lives and benefit you guys in your jobs, and that's, that's what I'm here for. It's not like I'm a fucking salesman, so I'm not. I'm just showing you how this thing works. But the other product that they do is a blaze defense, okay? This is the most freaking incredible extinguishing compound that I've ever seen in my life, all right? They have both the uh, Mark IV, which is the, the, little, the little tiny guy, which any operator could carry on his kit with no extra weight, and it's the Mark IX, okay? I don't know anything about what this chemical is in here, but when you have a big pile of molten slag on the ground, if I hit it with my water fire extinguisher, that would con continue to freaking steam for, you know, 30 seconds. And you hit it with this for about three seconds, and you can almost pick it up with your hands. It, it immediately cools off any, any molten compound that it comes in contact with. So you, if you're going to use these on an op, you definitely got to have extinguisher compound. Okay? So that's that. All right, I'm going to do a cut on rebar. You remove your burn rod. Okay? You flip it around. You stick it in there. There's a red igniter tip. Okay? It's a very small little thing right there. Where does that need to be? We're in. Down, down and away. Okay? This thing is not going to light properly if you have this thing up like this 
or if you're, you'll have it in any other angle like this, but you want the heat of that thermite match pulling up into that deal. Okay? You remove your thermite. <coughs> Making sure the orientation of your huya is like this. I'm going to strike. I'm going to light it. When I light the match, what do I do with it? Yeah. Drop it. Okay? Drop it and, and focus on your cut once it's out of your hands. All right, I'm going to cut about two inches in here, so I'll, I'll leave some for you guys to, to work with. All right, light. Ignition. This is half inch rebar. I brought out three eighths inch, uh, but the thing is, it just eats right through. It eats right through it. Not even, don't even waste a pen trying to cut it. This stuff here, when you the technique for cutting, and there's definitely a learning technique. Okay, Brian Cole, the, the designer of these things, he has over 100 burns under his belt, and the more you burn with them, the, the better your technique becomes. So what I was doing right there, and that was just my seventh cut is that I was applying pressure, kind of like moderate pressure. I wasn't pushing hard, but I was working it back and forth and giving it moderate pressure because you want that slab to clear out of there. If you just stick it on there and hold it in one spot, right, you're, you're not going to be as efficient as if you're moving around and letting that slab go. But you want to maintain contact with your target. You don't want to have it just light contact, but moderate contact. Same spot. There you go. There you go. That's a good reach, man. 